Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of NASCAR Heat 3 Career Mode. I hope you're all having a great day. Today we round out the regular season for the final time in our NASCAR Heat 3 uh, Career Mode. So this is going to be hopefully a fun race for us here at the Brickyard 400. For the Xfinity Series though, we had actually a special uh, one-off occasion here with subscriber James Stashkey in the car. You guys might know him as MX-5 from the other night. Uh, obviously uh, I had a bunch of you guys go send him some positive uh, messages on my uh, Bristol video after he was going through some rough times so we had him in the car just kind of just a little special thing and as always if any of you guys are struggling you know that I'm here and the rest of the community is always here to help you out now is but Stashkey was starting about uh, 19th or so as he went down the back straight away on his first lap but as he moved his way forward to up to P12 past the midway point of this race as he came through turns one heading down towards turns two he would come continue in P12 as he came to the final lap now coming through turns three now on the exit of turns four heading down the front straightaway for the final time here at Indianapolis it would be James Stashke coming through to get the 12th position here in Indianapolis still one race remains in the Xfinity Series before the playoffs and now we are here for the final race of the regular season for the Cup Series where we cut straight to qualifying it wasn't a great lap but it was half decent to say the least now as we would come across the line to go P15 here for the Brickyard 400 qualifying with a 48.566 We've had a rough history at this racetrack in the past, but hopefully we can turn it around today here for the Brickyard 400. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series has finally made its way to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the running of the big machine Vodka Brickyard 400. The Brickyard now marks the final stop of the regular season, a spot normally held by Richmond. So for those drivers on the fringe, Kissing the bricks may mean a lot more than in years past. For them, a victory here may be their last shot at glory. Which of these drivers will make the final cut? It's time to head down to the track and find out. All right, we're ready to go green here with the Big Machine 400 at the Brickyard here at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Corey LaJoy didn't have a good practice session. That team knows that they can do better as we get ready to go green here for the Brickyard 400 from the 15th starting position. Now behind Biggest Tenos Jr., Daniel Suarez is ready to go green, and the green flag is out. It is Suarez and McMurray battling for that last playoff position unless Cody Ware can get into the top 30 of points, or we have a brand new winner today as we head down towards turns one here for the first time in the Brickyard 400. It's Joey Logano and Kurt Busch on that front row. Logano still looking for win number one on the season. He is well inside the playoffs, obviously mathematically locked in, so he doesn't have to worry. Danny Hamlin, another driver looking for win number one on the season. Uh, he is also mathematically locked into the playoffs, so, but obviously those guys are going to be suffering on playoff points. Now let's head down this back straightaway on the inside of Daniel Suarez in the number 41 as we go down towards turn three behind the 10 of Eric Almarola. Suarez, his teammate there, as we come through on the exit of turn three, heading down the short little straightaway with Larson behind us as he ties a look to the inside of Daniel Suarez as we close in on the back there of Eric Almarola as we head down the front straightaway coming through to complete this first lap here in just a moment at Indy now as we're side by side with the 10 of Eric Almarola moving up now into the 13th position and there you see our rival of Martin Truex Jr. on the outside there of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. as we go through turns one behind us is still Kyle Larson who looks to the inside of Eric Almarola as we just about clear Almarola and now we do clear Almarola as we go through turns two now trying to get to the inside just about of our rival of a Martin Truex Jr. but I would stay behind him because I didn't really want to get put into a really bad position where Truex was going to try and wreck me so I just kind of held my position right here in P13 for the moment. And now as it came to lap five, still right behind Stenos and Truex, but this time Larson had looked to my outside, but now we look to the inside of Ricky Stenos Jr. as we come through on the exit of turn four, heading down now the front straightaway behind McMurray and Truex, but we have a good run, so we're going to take a three wide there with McMurray and Martin Truex Jr. as we head down the, back, or the front straightaway as we're going to try and side draft McMurray as we go down into turns one. Kurt Busch continues to lead the way as we get away now, clear of our arrival of Martin Truex Jr. We would be beside McMurray. We would continue forwards to the lap seven now we had gotten into the top 10 now passing Kurt Busch who was just leading a few laps ago and he had fallen quite a bit now as he went down into turns one at this point uh, Alex Bowman our teammate behind me as we come through turns one still side by side there with the one car of Kurt Busch as we go down into turns two we would be able to clear him and take over P9 and move all the way up into P7 as we came through to start this final lap here in this first stage we had passed Logano and Bo uh, Clint Boyer as we came to the white flag so now like I said uh, in the seventh position on this final lap here 
the first stage, but the game plan right here was really to just kind of finish uh, seventh in the stage. I knew that we could probably get past Kevin Harvick, but I wasn't going to be able to pass Austin Dillon, and we want to be restarting on the inside if possible, so I decided we're just going to kind of lay in line here behind Kevin Harvick for this final bit of this lap here in stage one. Kyle Busch in the first position with Chase Elliott behind him in second. Elliott has been gaining a good bunch of momentum lately here in our season as we head through turns four on the exit of the corner heading down the front straightaway it is going to be Kyle Busch though holding off Chase Elliott for the stage one victory and we're going to come across the line to get the seventh position here in stage one a solid effort uh, so I wasn't too disappointed with that obviously we've had a rough pass with this racetrack in the Cup Series. We've never finished in the top 10 at Indianapolis, just like Chicago, but we would put for two cans of fuel and four tires, and we would come through uh, to come out in the same position that we came into pit road. So now we get ready to start stage two from the seventh position behind the three of Austin Dillon. Kyle Busch and Chase Elliott on that front row Kozlowski and Menard on row two as the green flag is El Menard having a solid run. If he can win this race, he'll put himself in the playoffs. It's only a 10 lap stage now as we go down into turns one on the inside there of the four of Kevin Harvick behind us. We got Harvick's teammate of Clint Boyer as we come through turns one. Neither Suarez or McMurray, I believe, got points in stage one. So Suarez should at the very least still be 21 points to the good as we head out of turn two down the back straightaway. Menard gets clear and now Harvick Harvick's going to fight back on my outside as we head down the long stretch towards turns three. Kyle Busch continues to lead as Chase Elliott drops from second all the way down to fourth now as Austin Dillon looks to his inside as we made a move there on the inside of Paul Menard as we come through on the exit of the turn three. Still side by side there with the 21 car uh, piloted by Menard. Now as Kozlowski is up into that second position as we exit turn four heading down the front straightaway. The draft is so important at this racetrack trying to use Austin Dillon as our drafting partner kind of right now as we head down the straightaway coming through to complete the first lap here in this second stage as we go down into turns one stealing on the inside of Pulmonard now as we come through to exit turn one Kyle Busch leads still over Keselowski and Austin Dillon lurking just behind him as we come through turns two now to the inside of Chase Elliott as he would get clear of Menard we would slide up in front of Elliott and complete the pass and now as we came through on the end of lap two heading to lap three we had a run on Austin Dillon so we looked to the inside of him as we head down towards turns one with eight to go here in stage two now as we kind of take over P3 so far having a brilliant run here in the Brickyard 400, which is something we've never had at this racetrack in our career, but we clear Austin Dillon, and we would set our sights now on the two of Kozlowski's who came to lap six, just five to go in the second stage, now looking to the inside of Brad Kozlowski as we head down the back straightaway. He has more speed down the straightaway, so we're going to give him a little bit of a side draft. And now we're going to fight back side by side with the two car of Kozlowski. Dylan closing in on a back bumper as we go down into turn three, but we have the advantage over the two of Kozlowski. He's going to try and stay on my outside as he will do just that there as we exit turn three. Now heading down into turns four, but this time we have the advantage. We would clear Kozlowski and set our sights now on the leader of Kyle Busch as he came through at the end of lap six. Now heading down the front straightaway, we would end up getting a caution now here in the second stage late in the the second stage. This would set us up for a one lap dash to decide the winner of stage two between myself and potentially Kyle Busch now as we come through to start this final lap here in stage two. Behind us is Kozlowski and Dylan. We have the edge over Kyle Busch as we go down into turns one but can't quite clear him and that's going to be a huge advantage to the 18 of Kyle Busch now as we exit turn one and you can see the speed difference now as we go down into turns two. Kyle Busch clear. Kozlowski to the inside now as he takes over second and now Boyer looks to the inside as he tries to take the third position away from us as we head down the back straight away. Then to try and hang on to this draft from Kyle Busch now as Boyer gets clear as we drop down to fourth on this restart as we go down into turn three for the final time here in stage two. Menard and Dylan side by side behind us there as we try to look to the inside of Boyer but can't quite do so now as we go into turn four for the final time. Kyle Busch won stage one and now he leads the way out of turn four in front of Kenslowski and Kyle Busch is going to come through to hold on to get the stage two victory as we're going to come across the line to get the fourth position here in the second stage as Boyer actually edged out Kozlowski there at the line and Kozlowski falls to P3. We would have to come to pit road obviously for two games of field as well as four tires uh, with only 16 laps remaining. It's not going to be a long dash at all here in this final stage. I did have a little bit of an audio cut out here because of my controller dying, uh, so that was unfortunate. But yeah, we would pit for two cans of fuel, like I said, four tires, and that would be all that we did. And unfortunately, we come in in fourth and exit in dead last 40th place for this third and final stage because the AI don't need tires at all.
certainly something I'm looking forward to being fixed in NASCAR Heat 4, but the final stage is underway. Obviously, we don't really uh, have to worry about this situation. We are locked into the playoffs. We've been locked in for a while now. As we're going to get a very aggressive, though, making that three wide there as we go down towards turns one, kind of pushing De Benedetto to the side as I was being pretty aggressive. Only 13 laps remain at this point in the race, so not a lot of time. Kind of our chances of winning, I felt like we're pretty much out the window at this point now as we come through on the exit of turn two, heading down the back straightaway for the first time here in this third and final stage behind our teammate of William Byron who's running mid-30s which has uh, pretty much been his average running position throughout this whole season in our career mode now as we go down towards turns three. Certainly a disappointing uh, season and career mode has been for William Byron now as I don't think actually he has made the playoff once because he did get a win a few seasons back. Uh, I think it was a surprise win now as we come through on the exit of turn four heading down the front straightaway on the inside of Chris Buescher right behind our teammate of William Byron. Now he's going to try and look to the inside of him and maybe try to side draft him but can't quite get to his left ear as we hit 12 laps to go here in this race as we go down into turns one. Up to P35. Now as we get into the back there of our teammate William Byron, a little bit of a checkup as we go down towards turns two. He's going to leave the lane open. We're going to get very aggressive, and we would get past our teammate of William Byron. And now as we come through on lap 31, we had moved up to 32nd place. Byron continuing to follow us as we have approached now the inside of Martin Truex Jr., our rival, and he's going to hit us into the apron, and we get into the side of Eric Almirola now as we exit turn four. Now having to deal with our rival Martin Truex Jr. in the regular season finale now as he's going to side draft us down the straightaway and we're not going to back off now. Nine laps to go as we're side by side going towards turns one. And Truex hits us and sideways we go and we both go crashing into the outside wall. Hard hits for both of us now as that's going to completely take us out of this race here in the Brickyard 400. Martin Truex Jr., our rival, doing typical Martin Truex Jr. things to us this season, and it has come to an end for us here in the regular season. This Ty Dillon was actually leading at this point, but we had 19 seconds of damage, so we had DNF from this race, and big shock at the end of this race, Ty Dillon would hang on to the victory, now kicking out Daniel Suarez from the last playoff position, so Ty Dillon gets the last playoff position, and I mean, obviously it's going to be a complete waste of a playoff spot, unfortunately, but Ty Dillon has won his way in now as what a good first and second stage it was for us, and then we get put down to 40th due to the pit stop, and then Martin Truex Jr. thinks uh, he just he didn't want us getting away from him, and uh, just, uh, I guess, a fitting end to the regular season as it ended about uh, 9 or 10 laps early for us, unfortunately. There will be a, some tweaks coming to how I use my own DNF system in NASCAR Heat 4, uh, which I will be uh, informing you guys on at a later date. But obviously, Truex not happy. I kind of given up on trying to apologize to him. We're going to provoke him. That was his fault. He took us out. Uh, unfortunately, there as he hit me to the apron, I just couldn't hang on to it. And we made contact. Both went into the wall pretty hard. But as always, if you guys enjoyed this episode, make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Here is the playoff grid for our final playoffs of NASCAR Heat 3 career mode. We come into the playoffs 10 points to the good so it's going to be a hard fought battle all the way to the championship four can we make it to the championship four it's going to be a tough one there for as like i said the first guy out as ty dillon gets in denny hamlin's actually the last guy in the playoffs so he has some work to do but hopefully we can make it to the final four this season and end our heat three career mode with a championship obviously one championship coming into it so let's go get a second one kyle was in pretty good shape and same as harvick so i will see you guys in the next one thank you for watching everybody and have yourselves a great day